We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Really glad you're here. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Matt. I serve here at ACC as one of the pastors and one of my favorite parts of my job is I get to teach on most Sundays. Uh, our, our projector is a little bit on the fritz today, so I hope it's not distracting to you. You'll get maybe most of what I'm trying to share with you. Hey, you know, when we go into a new year, and as an, an old year kind of wraps up and a new year starts, there's this moment that we all have to kind of hit that reset button and to ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do with this new opportunity, a fresh year Right? What, what is it that you want me to, to do with it? And so I wanted to put together a, a kind of a one-off message to challenge you as you're putting together some thoughts for 2024, uh, what I think God's Word would have you lean into as you're putting those plans together. And the next week, we're going to start that new series called Running to Win. I hope you can be part of that and uh, grab some invite cards and invite some others to be a part of it. You know, one of um, the, the greatest inventions of all time— for my opinion, uh, is GPS. Anybody else with me on that? Like, I am terrible at knowing where I am at any given moment. You can throw me in the middle of a place and ask me what direction I'm facing. I have no idea. I'm really terrible at that kind of stuff. And back before GPS, do you remember what you would have to do when you got lost, right? You would have to pull over. You'd find someone who looked like they knew the area a little bit. And it was simply like, excuse me, sir, can you help me? I'm trying to find this, this restaurant. And they would say, all right, well, here's what you're going to do. And they would give you like, you're going to go up here to the light and you're going to turn right. And then you're going to go down about two miles past three stop signs, right? And then you're going to turn left. And then you're, and they're going to give you like eight steps. And by the time they're done, you feel so thankful that they've taken the time to walk you through that, that you're afraid to ask them to repeat any of it, right? And I only have remembered the first thing, right? Maybe even that I, by now, I'm like, okay, thank you. And I'm like, did you get any of that, right? I'm asking my wife, did you catch any of that? No? Oh, right. we're still lost. Well, well, GPS is incredible because it, it kind of gives you that step-by-step -step direction. It helps you get to where you're going. And one thing I've learned about the way God interacts with us as he reveals his will to us in our lives, as he gives us the direction that he wants us to go, as he helps us come up with plans for the new year, right, is that the way God communicates is a lot like GPS. Think about it. You know, GPS, you get to, to hear, hear, turn here, do this, make a U-turn. Hey, you went the wrong way, and let me get you back on track, you know. Uh, even there's those long stretches of silence when you're on the right road for a long time, and sometimes it feels like you're not getting any new direction. But what I want to do is kind of share with you, before you put some firm goals in place for the new year, how God reveals his will to you in your life, all right? So let me um, share with you what I think is probably the first the best place to start. Have you ever noticed that whenever you put your address or you put an address into GPS, where does it give you directions starting from? Where you're at, right at that moment, right? It doesn't care where you were yesterday. It, you might think, you know, I had a really crummy 2023 and I was supposed to be, I was supposed to go from over here to over there. You're not gonna wanna wire into your GPS where you used to be. You want to start in your GPS where you are right now. And so it doesn't really matter if 2023 was awesome for you or it was a total a bust for you. What you want to do is start and by listening to God and saying, God, I want to start this journey of 2024 and I'm going to start today from where I am right now. And so that's the very first thing I want you to write down in your notes. Let your journey start today. 
Even think about this from a GPS perspective. If you've ever been on a three-day road trip before, you drive, you put the final destination into your GPS, right? And it gives you the route that you're supposed to be on. But eventually you're going to stop and you're going to sleep in a hotel. And then the next morning, what are you going to do? You're going to reset your GPS. You're going to put the address in there again, and it's going to give you the, the, the directions from that location, it might be the exact same directions. Maybe there's now construction on the road that wasn't there yesterday or an accident that wasn't there yesterday. It's going to maybe give you a new route. But every day you get to, to start a new trip. God, where is it that you want me to go from where I am right now? And so let your journey start from where you are. Let your journey start today. You know, when you think about your last year, I want you to, uh, all of you, do me a favor. Think of one word that kind of describes how you feel about 2023. Now, some of you had a really great year. So your word is maybe like thankfulness or happiness or excitement or something awesome, right? Some of you, though, you look back at 2023 and nothing really happened that exciting. It was just another year. It flew by. And you, maybe the word you're thinking of is kind of like apathy. You know, that's the emotion. Like, yeah, it's just a year. Some of you had a really crummy year, and maybe the word shame or fear or something else comes to mind. Well, Scripture says, regardless of what word just came to your mind about the past, we need to leave that behind because we're going to start our journey from where we are right now. We're not going to start from any perspective of where we were yesterday. And let me show you a few examples of that in Scripture the first example I want to give you is what we should do about yesterday when yesterday was awesome. What God does in Isaiah, he starts, he's going to read, uh, we're going to read a passage where God is speaking, and it's right after he talks about the awesome things he's just done for his people. He's like, hey, remember when I, I opened up the waters and you guys were able to go across on dry ground? That was awesome. And remember your enemies chased you in and then I let the waters kind of crush them. That was so cool, right? And he's talking about all the good things. And then he says this in Isaiah 43. But forget all that. I love that. Forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, you have already begun or I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. In other words, if you had a really great year, I still don't want to let that year uh, impede on what God might have for you in 2024. Forget about all that. God's got a new plan for you for this year. But what about if you had a really crummy year? What about if yesterday wasn't that great? Think about the, uh, the Apostle Paul. Uh, before he started being a follower of Jesus and was on these missionary journeys, he was basically a persecutor and murderer of Christians. And here's what Paul would say about his past. He says in Philippians 3, 13, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Now, this verse on the screen right here is kind of our, our theme verse going into the, the new series starting next week. I would love for you to be a part of that, to learn what, is it that it, what does it look like to press on for the prize and to, to receive what God has for us in the future. But either way, you see whether it's a good yesterday or a bad yesterday, either way, what does God say? Forget about it. Leave the past behind. Start your journey from where you are right now. In Lamentations 3.23, it says, Great is God's faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. You know, every day you can start the journey from where you are that day. Every day his mercies are new. All right, here's the second thing. Number two in your notes. I want you to prosper while you wait patiently for your next direction. I want you to prosper wherever you are while you wait wherever you are patiently for the next direction that God is going to give you. You know, a lot of us, what happens when we want, uh, we go into a new year, 
or we've been doing the same thing for a while now and we're just ready for God to give us something new, we can get really impatient. We can be like, God, why won't you reveal to me what the next step is for my life? I've been here doing this thing for a while now. I'm ready for the next step. Well, think about it from a GPS perspective. You know, sometimes when you're on your GPS, you roll on to 95 North and your GPS isn't going to say anything to you for three hours. Why? Because you're supposed to be on 95 North for three hours. Aren't you thankful that your GPS doesn't chime in every minute saying, good job, keep going? I mean, that would be annoying, right? And yet at the same time, it can feel like deafening silence. Sometimes you're, you're not hearing a new word from God, and it sounds like, it feels like he's absent. But the truth is that he has you right where he wants you, and he doesn't want you to move from that direction for, for this season. And so it doesn't feel like he's giving you any new direction because he's not. He wants you to keep moving in the direction you're already moving. And so what we need to learn how to do is to prosper while we wait for the next direction. If you're on 95 North and you're not getting any new commands from your GPS, just do a good job driving on 95 North. It says in Psalm 37, verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good, and then you will live safely in the land and prosper. In the NIV, it says, then you will dwell in the land. Uh, in other words, w what I want us to learn how to do is wherever you are, if God hasn't given you a command to change directions, prosper there. Wherever your roots are right now, grow those deep. Get, uh, be, be fully invested in this part of the plan that God has for you. Don't be so anxious about the next part of the plan that God hasn't revealed to you yet that you're not any good where he has you right now. So if you're in a season of your life where God hasn't given you what's next, that's totally cool. Prosper where you are right now. Be where you are present right now. It says in Psalm 37, verse 7. By the way, I'm going to read a lot from Psalm 37. So if you're looking for a place to open your Bible, Psalm 37 is a good place today. Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. You don't need to have eight steps of the GPS in front of you and know exactly where you're going and what's coming. You just need to know that you're doing the step that he has in front of you right now at this moment. Just wait patiently. In fact, I, I put this in your notes. I think this is a really good reminder for all of us. I'm going to say it. I put it on the screen. It's this. If you don't know what God has next for you, keep doing what God has now for you. We can get so caught up in wanting to know what's next that we are useless in the now. We start thinking eight steps ahead and we're supposed to be thriving right here, right where God has us. So if you don't know what's next for you, that's okay. Just keep doing what he has now for you with excellence. In fact, remember Psalm 37, 3, where it says two things, right? Trust the Lord and do good. What am I supposed to do until God gives me a new direction? Well, do two things. Trust in the Lord and do good right where you are. Just keep doing what you're doing. Do it well. Trust God. And when he's ready, he'll say, get over to the right lane. We're getting off. But that might not be for hours. It might not be for days. It might not be till 2025. I don't know. It's a quote I, I love from Louis Giglio I heard recently. He's a, he's a a pastor, and he says this, trust God today, and then the rest will come. You see the double meaning in that? <laughs> if you just trust God today, you, you can rest peacefully. You, don't, you can sleep easily. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. Just trust God today, and the rest will come. But the, the same is also true. When you just trust God with today, the next step of your life, the next direction will eventually come, and you'll know what it is. Just trust God today. You know, what's interesting with the way God reveals his will in our lives is that he often does it suddenly. 
He usually doesn't give you a big uh, off-ramp. He doesn't give you a big, long, like, hey, just so you know, in three years, this is what we're going to do. It doesn't often happen that way. Think about even just the Christmas story, right? The, angel, or the, the shepherds are out doing their thing. They're just watching over their sheep, thriving, prospering in the job that they have in that season. And then what does the Bible say? Suddenly, an angel of the Lord came and gave them a new direction, a new thing. You know, Mary, right? She's just doing her thing, and suddenly... An angel comes and gives her a new direction. And the same is true a lot of times for us in our GPS. I don't know which one you use. I love Waze, by the way. Sometimes I'm just not, I'm cruising in that fast lane, and all of a sudden I hear, take this right. And I'm like, whoa, you know, like, (laughs) but sometimes the direction just comes suddenly. And when it comes, we need to be ready to, to hear it and listen to it. Uh, But God is usually just going to give you the, the step that you're on. And he's going to reveal the next step suddenly when he's ready to give you the next step. So we need to be paying attention and listening. All right, let me give you the next, uh, the next uh, number three. Before I give you number three, let me read the scripture that goes with it. In Psalm 37, verse four, here's what it says. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Now, this verse should be confusing to some of us, to most of us. And here's why, right? The Bible says, we teach at this church that the Bible is very clear that all of us have hearts that are wickedly deceptive. Our hearts are constantly trying to take us into things that are not good for us, If we just lean into our own heart's understanding, it's going to take us places that are not good for us to be. So when you read a scripture like this, it says, listen, delight in the Lord, and he'll give you whatever your wicked little heart wants. (laughs) That's not what this verse is saying. That's not what this verse is saying at all. In fact, let me give you number three, and I think I can make this make sense. Here's, Here's number three. Tune your heart so that you can hear God when he speaks. You need to tune your heart so that when God speaks, you can hear it. And and let me explain this using a couple analogies. Let me use my GPS analogy for just a moment. You know those moments where you're using GPS and all of a sudden you get to a place where there's no satellite signal and there's no Wi-Fi and there's no, you know, uh, cell service. And and sometimes your GPS, uh, all of a sudden it's just like, please proceed to the highlighted route. It doesn't even know where you are, right? Sometimes we can lose the connection in our GPS and we no longer really even know, like, where are we? Where are we? In, In conjunction to where we're supposed to be, the connection's lost. But I love this concept of tuning. You know, the old radio, right? An FM radio, if you got one of the old dials, right? When you dial in that radio, you're going to get a couple different things. Uh, One option when you're in between stations, right? You're just going to get a lot of noise, right? That's, and for a lot of us, we're not tuning our heart to the right station. And all we're hearing is a lot of noise from this world. And that's when your little wicked heart doesn't have a clear direction, doesn't have a clear message. And what we do is we start following what our heart wants to do. And that's going to cause a lot of problems. But the other thing that sometimes happens, right, you can tune your radio, but to the wrong channel. You know, you're you're trying to get some hip hop and you end up on the country station, and you're not even listening to what you wanted to listen to. Well, the truth is, there's all sorts of messages in this world. There's a lot of people that would love for you to tune your heart to their message. There's people out there right now that want you and long for you. Satan and his demons want you to tune your heart to the world because, boy, do they have a message that's going to take you off route. And so what we need to do is we need to tune our heart to God's. And how do we do that according to the scripture we we read? It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and then he will give you your heart's desires. What what does that mean? When you delight in the Lord, when you decide, hey, I'm going to spend time every day in in God's letter that he's written to me. I'm going to spend time in the Bible. I'm going to read it. And every day I'm going to pray 
And every day I'm going to lean into the Holy Spirit. I'm going to delight in my relationship with God. What you're doing in that moment is you're tuning your heart so that your heart is on the same channel that God's heart is on. And then when God speaks, you'll be able to hear his message. In other words, the thing that your heart desires, when you're delighting in God, the thing that your heart desires in that moment is going to be the same thing that God desires for your life. You're going to be in sync. And so this one is probably the most crucial. If you got to like circle one of these numbers, if you're trying to figure out what does God want for me in 2024, I'm trying to understand God's will for my life. What is my purpose for being here? All those questions. Listen, you're not going to be able to answer those questions properly unless you delight in the Lord first. Your heart will not be tuned to the right voices. And your heart will take you astray. This is crucial. And by the way, you know, uh, I believe that God already knows every decision you're going to make in your life. It's already written down. He already knows every time you you turn right, he knows you're going to do that. But you know, like in GPS, sometimes... um, you would go and you put in an address that you're trying to get to. And what does the GPS do? It gives you like two or three or four options. There's a few different ways that it will allow you to go to get to where you need to be. And sometimes people will call me as a pastor and they'll say, Pastor, I, I have this problem. I could really use some advice. I'm trying to figure out what God's will is for my life. And so that's the way the conversation starts, Right. And they'll say, listen, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm supposed to take this job or move to this place or do this thing or whether or not I'm supposed to take this job and move to this place and do this thing, like a major life decision, right? Am I supposed to do this thing or am I supposed to do this thing? And sometimes there's even a third or fourth option and there's like a lot of things going on and they're like, how in the world am I supposed to know which one is God's will for my life? And the simple first question I always ask is, are you delighting in the Lord right now? Are you delighting in the Lord? Are you spending time in his word? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you doing what you need to do to tune your heart to his? And if they say yes, I'm like, that is awesome, right? That's the first thing, right? I'm glad you're doing that. If they say no, I'm like, all right, let's, let's go delight in the Lord. Let's spend some time in his word and let's ask him to provide some wisdom here. But if they're already delighting in the Lord and there's three open doors in front of them and they're trying to figure out which one to walk through, I'm just like, well, I believe that your heart right now is in sync with God's. Which one of those doors excites you the most? Which one of those is your heart's desire? Well, I really want to go through the middle door. Go through the middle door. Go through the middle door. Because you're delighting in the Lord. And your heart and his heart are going to be synced up. And if that's the one that gives you the most excitement, I believe God's leading you and leading you through that door. Just go through that door. Just like with GPS, which path am I supposed to take? Well, if you're delighting in the Lord, pick the one that, you know, are you trying to save on gas mileage? Are you trying to get there quick? Or which one? You're trying to avoid some tolls? Like, what's the deal? What's, what does your heart desire? Pick that path. And I believe God's going to honor it. So I want, I want to encourage you with that. Here's a fourth one, number four. Jump into God's will with both feet. Jump in to God's will with both feet. In other words, I want you to learn how to trust God. When he tells you to turn right and everything in you says, "Uh, I believe straight is a better route for me. Or I'm pretty sure I know a shortcut. Or I think I know a better way. When God tells you to turn right, here's what I want you to do. You ready? Turn right. Trust that God knows what's best for you. Any swimmers in this room, anybody who was a part of a swim team or just maybe just enjoy swimming, a a, a real swimmer knows there's only, I, I was on the swim team in high school, and the only reason I was on the swim team is because if you wanted to play varsity water polo, you had to be on the swim team, right? So I had to be on the swim team. I hated it, but I was on the swim team. And all swimmers know there's only one way to properly enter the pool. And that's just to jump in, right? A lot of us, the way we enter the pool is we're like, all right, I'm just gonna go put my feet in first and let them get used to the water. 
Okay, and then I'm going to go a little, and it, every little step into the water is a little bit more painful, right? When the water's cold, like nobody wants to do that. The only way is just jump in with both feet. Just get in, all the way in, head underwater, and then it's over, and you get to enjoy the pool. And when God gives you direction, I want us to, to be a, a church of followers of Jesus that have enough trust that we're like, God, if you want me to turn right, I'm turning right. I'm going to jump with both feet. I'm going to trust you. In Psalm 37, verse 5, it says, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. How about Colossians 3, 23? It says, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. How about back to Psalm 37? I've got a couple more here in Psalm 37. 23 says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by his hand. You know, when my, my kids were young, and I, you know, I would get in the pool, and they're out on the at ledge of the pool, and I'm trying to convince them to jump into me into the pool. And the pool can be a dangerous place when you don't know how to swim, right? And so I'm trying to tell them, listen, just jump into me. I'm going to catch you. I'm not going to let you drown. I'm not going to let you fall. And at first, there's a lot of trepidation, right? Before they, I've earned their trust, they sit there and, and maybe they're like, okay, all right, count down, right? Dad, just count down from three. All right, three, two, one. Right, oh, count down from five, right? And it's just... But eventually, they get to a place where they realize, my dad's not going to drop me. And they jump in once, and they've jumped in twice, and before you know it, the third time and fourth time, they're not even waiting for you to say, I'm ready anymore, right? They're like, dad's going to go out of his way to make sure I live. Well, the truth is, that's the way God loves you, right? When it says, though you may stumble, you will never fall, for the Lord holds you by the hand. I don't know about you, but once I put a direction into my GPS, I just trust it. I don't question it. It says, turn here. I'm like, all right, I guess there's an accident ahead that I don't know about. And I turn. Psalm 37, verse 34 says, put your hope in the Lord, travel steadily along his path. He will honor you by giving you the land. And you will see the wicked destroyed. Notice what it says there. It says, travel steadily along his path. You know what that word steadily means? A lot of us, we go through life with so much uncertainty that every little step is just like, eh? You know, like, God says, listen, I want to give my plan to you. And I want you to be so confident and trust me so much that you can walk with your head held high and you can have some swagger in your walk and you can know I'm in God's plan until he gives me another way to go. I'm going to keep going this way and I'm going to walk steadily and with confidence. I want us to be jumping in with both feet. When God gives you a path, follow it. Jump in with both feet and do it. Here's the the last one for this morning. Number five, listen for direction, not destination. Listen for direction, not destination. When you put something into your GPS, what it's not going to do is say, all right, step one, go to your final destination, right? Like that's not, that's not helpful at all, but I don't need to know that I'm supposed to drive to my final destination. I'm trying to figure out how to, am I turning right or left at this intersection? That's what I need to know right now. And I'm going to walk steadily and with swagger, and I'm going to go all the way to Gaza. I'm not going to let any distractions stop me from God's will in my life. Oh, there's a little guy over there who's reading the Bible, doesn't know what he's doing. Well, that's too bad because God wants me in Gaza. You see, Philip could have been confused and and, and taken God's will as the destination instead of the direction. God did not tell Philip to go to Gaza. He told him to go on the desert road that leads to Gaza. Why did God want Philip on that road? Because halfway through, he was going to encounter an Ethiopian eunuch parked on the side of the road, reading scripture, not knowing what he's reading, and Philip was going to share the gospel with him. 
That's why God wanted him on the road. And so what happens sometimes is we go to God and we say, God, where do you want me in 2028? As if God's going to reveal like a final destination to us. And what I think we need to do instead is saying, God, what direction do you want me walking in? God, do you want me to walk towards New York? Then I'm going to start walking towards New York. I'm going to set my GPS to New York. I'm going to start going in that direction. And until you say, stop, turn, head to Pittsburgh. All right. And I'm, I'm heading to Pittsburgh now. Now, does that mean that the whole time I was on this road heading to New York, I was outside of God's will because God wanted me in Pittsburgh? No, it doesn't. You see, God reveals his will to us in step-by-step directions. It, oftentimes, you know, when you put an address into Google Maps and you're trying to get your step-by-step directions, there's really kind of two formats, right? One will be if you're driving by car, And it will give you a zigzag, here you're doing this, and you're merging onto this, and you're going around this, and you're U-turning here and getting back on this. And that's what your your trip is going to look like to get you to where God wants you. It doesn't mean that when you get on 95, and then he says, all right, now merge onto 66, that you were never supposed to be on 95. You were supposed to be on 95. It was in order to get you to where he wanted you to get so you could get on this next part of your journey. And the other way that Google Maps sometimes gives you the direction is more like an airplane, right? You just see a line that goes from BWI to to San Francisco. God's will isn't like that. God will give you enough. He'll reveal the, the path in front of your feet. God's word is like a light on our path. It's gonna reveal right in front of us where we're supposed to step. And we just need to be faithful to thrive And to prosper in that step, in the next step of our journey, to jump in both feet to the part that we can see that God's revealed to us and not get all caught up in trying to figure out what's eight years from now. God may have given you an eight-year direction to walk towards. And if he has, if he's saying, listen, I want you to walk towards this direction. I want you to walk faithfully in that direction and just know that when God, if you're tuning your heart to his, asks you to pivot be ready to pivot. At this church, we do a lot of planning, right? I've I've shared this a couple weeks ago. We already have all the sermons planned and all the events planned for 2024. They're all written down somewhere. We know what we're doing, but we always end meetings like that with, with an understanding, God, if you want us to do this according to the plan you revealed to us now, then we're going to do this. But if In in February, you want us to turn and pivot from this plan to a new plan. We're going to do that. Probably the most important New Year's resolution you can make, if you're not already spending time in God's Word, is say, this year, I'm going to start the day in God's Word, tuning my heart to His so that I can hear Him when He speaks. Maybe you're in this room and the problem you're having right now is you're anxious about what's next. Like, listen, I know I'm doing what God wants for me right now, but God, I'm ready for what's next. I'm ready for what's next. Show me what's next. The thing I would encourage you to do, two things. One is be patient. God might have you on this road for another season. And the other thing is prosper where you're planted. Until God gives you another garden to grow in, grow your roots in this garden. Maybe... You're having an issue right now because God already has revealed to you what your next step is. He's already asked you to pivot, but you're not sure whether or not you should. You're not wanting to do it. It doesn't make sense to you. And what I would encourage you to do this year is to trust God and jump in with both feet. Jump in. Whatever God's telling you to do, do it. He's going to hold your hand. He's not going to let you fall. And if you're in this room right now and you're a bit overwhelmed because you feel like God's will for your life, it's like such a big picture. He's revealed to you what 2030, the destination might be, and you're seeing it. You're like, I have no idea how I'm supposed to get there. That seems so far away. That seems like such a long distance to travel. Well, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Just take the next step of the directions. Don't worry about the final destination. You might not even have that right. 
just take the next step as God reveals it to you. All right, church, let's pray together and lift these things up to him. God, we ask right now that you would help each of us in this room, those of us who make up the, the family of Christ. God, would you reveal to us what it is that you'd like us to do? Father, we ask that you would start our journey from where we are right now, that you give us a path forward. Some of us are, are off in some random location that doesn't make sense to you, but would you help us go from where we are right now to where we need to be? God, would you reveal that to us step by step and give us the ability to trust you? And God, would you allow us to spend time delighting in you so that our hearts will hear you when you communicate that truth to us? God, we want to be a church that trusts you into whatever you have next. We love you and we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this. You belong at ACC.